so um, another question what are some practical tips for incorporating mindfulness into family life uh, studies and this stressful work uh, I think family life if somebody in the family yes particularly head of the family right they start practicing meditation and uh, uh, express the the benefit of meditation through the person's behavior. That means the person must practice patience, yes, understanding, determination, friendliness. You have to express it in your thoughts, words, and deeds. Yes. And then others will begin to think why this person is so different from us. Okay. Why this? What this person does different from us? Yeah. They, 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 they begin to question, yeah. and then they realize that the head of the family is meditating, and then they can head of the family can encourage others very gently, kindly, softly, with patience, without trying to trying to force on them. And then they also will learn, even though sometimes they may be reluctant, they will learn later on, seeing the benefit of the head of the family, they also will learn. I wrote an article long ago, that's called Crime Nursery. Crime Nursery. Crime Nursery. Yes. That means all the, uh, hard, the difficulties, Criminal, activi criminal activities uh, start from the family. Yeah. The way how parents uh, teach their children yeah. to behave. For instance, if parents are fighting all the time, if the parents are arguing all the time, if parents are lose their temper, and so forth, these are things that children learn. And then when they grow up, they also will be angry people, hating people, violent people, criminals, and so forth. And therefore, all this, this has a very far-reaching result. Therefore, in order, in order to maintain family unity, yes. harmony, yes. maintain peace, yes. and they are, uh, you know, working together in friendliness, they must meditate as highly head of the tea, head of the family. Okay. If he's, he has only husband and wife, yes. I think it is very good for their harmony, friendship, relationship, yes. to meditate, both of them. Both of them. Yes. And that's how we have to maintain yes. a good relationship yeah. with people. Right. So I have one more question, Bhante, on that, the same line of thoughts. So uh, places like Sri Lanka and I know we lived in South Korea for student. So they spend uh, uh, from seven to like a three o'clock in the in the school, like I say high school, come home, spend half an hour and then go to the tuition. Right? They come home like nine or eleven o'clock in the evening and uh, they, I'm sure they, they are building a lot of stress among themselves uh, and the parents are so isolated, they are busy with, you know, f uh, working to pay the tuition fees, etc. And the, so uh, for student and the working uh, group of you know, like uh, engineers and others, so what's the message? You did say that, yeah, make sure you at least meditate uh, one minute and then extend to whatever you can. Are there any other uh, guidance tricks that you can give? <laughs> There's a very, very relevant and yet complicated uh, question. Yes, Dante. Why do they go to tuition? Yeah. Because they don't teach. In, in school, school, they don't teach. Yeah. Teachers don't teach the subject that they're supposed to teach. Yes. And they are in the evening, they ask the students to come there to their places, their homes, yes. to, to attend the tuition class. Yes. If they teach the subject in school, 
They don't have to go to tuition class. Yes. Do you think all the students in America go to tuition no. classes? No. Nobody goes. Nobody goes. Why? Because the subject is taught in the school. Yes. Yeah. This is Sri Lankan politics. Yes. Politician or uh, what do you call this? Policy makers. Yes. Lawmakers must have some rules, laws to control this. And that is the secular section. Yes. Without taking care of the secular part, yeah. how can we teach them to practice meditation? Yes, ma'am. True. Children have to go through their 13 year yeah. education system. Yeah. Then, of course, after that, going to higher education is a different thing. Yeah. But the first 13 years, they must uh, learn basic things. Yeah. And the teachers are trained, teachers are. They're supposed to have some degrees to teach. Yes. And one of, the th one of the things they have to learn is the teaching method. Yes. To various, you know, class yeah. of children. Yeah. Yes. And therefore that's a completely, you know, complex, complex situation. Yeah. Yes. And if that part is taken care of, it is very easy for spiritual leaders to teach meditation. Mm. Yes. Yes. Okay, Mati. Uh, I have a question here, uh, somewhat I am puzzled myself. Uh, question is, how can we balance mindfulness practice with our responsibilities and duties, especially when we feel overwhelmed? You know, we must learn to prioritize our work. When we put uh, Priority to unnecessary things, we have to, when you prioritize, yeah. you put unnecessary things at, at the bottom. Right. Most importantly, you put on the top. Important. Right? Yes. That is how you prioritize. Yes. And most of the things many people do are not so necessary for their daily yeah. life. They spend some time, you know, reading your papers, yeah. gossiping. Yes. And just uh, wasting their time in yes. shopping malls, yeah, and so forth and so on. Yeah, yeah. But yes. if they prioritize their work, yes, they pay attention to their yes. most important yeah. works at first. Yes, and and uh, by the end of the day, you realized other things that you have not done were not important. Yes. When you go on like this, you learn to schedule your life, yes. schedule your time, learn to manage time, and then you will not be so stressful. Yeah, true. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, <clears throat> for, for someone who is new to mindfulness, what are the first steps they should take to begin their practice? The first step is that they learn to sit in one place. Okay. Any posture they like. Yes. The best posture is the lotus yeah. posture. Okay. And most people cannot sit, even then, now I'm not sitting in full lotus, I'm yes. sitting in half lotus. Yes. Okay, okay. But the best posture is full lotus. I can sit in that posture. Yeah, yeah, of course. Or sit on a cushion in easy posture. Okay. If that is the difficult, sit in a chair. Okay. Putting your feet down. Yes. yes. And keeping your body straight upright. Yes. And close your eyes and then begin to focus your mind on the breath. Yes. And that's how we begin. Right. So you keep breathing as I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Very slowly and completely emptying your yes. lungs. Okay. That's how you begin. Yes. And then pay attention to your feelings. Yeah. When you breathe, you from the very beginning of your breath, your breathing, you experience some feelings. Yes. And that feeling is no longer there in a, in a fraction of a second because the breath is moving. Yes. As breath is moving, the feeling is also is changing. Yes. yes. When the breath goes into your lungs, you have different feelings. Right. And when you breathe out, you have different feelings. Yes. So you begin to see the Changes of in uh, uh, your feeling, your feeling. Yeah. 
which means you learn to pay attention to impermanence. I have written a book called Impermanence in Plain English. Yes. Yeah, that's in the list. Yeah. Yeah. There I have explained it in yeah. detail. Yeah. Actually, everything. Yes. Whether you believe it or not, everything is permanently impermanent. Yes. Got it. Permanently impermanent. Yes. Nothing is permanent. Yes. Yep. So in the breathing, we begin to experience this impermanence of yes. feeling, yeah. our perception, yes. our thought, and our consciousness, breath. Yeah. All these are changing, 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 changing. Yeah. Okay. Impermanent. Yeah. That is how you begin. Noticing, it, just focusing mind on the breath itself is not meditation. Yes. But there is much more than that. Thank you, Vandit.